So throughout all of sports and esports, it's often a common debate of who the greatest player of all time is. Now, if you pay attention to League of Legends, people often refer to Faker as the greatest League of Legends player of all time. If you pay attention to Counter-Strike, people often say Neo or Forrest is the greatest Counter-Strike player. And then even more specifically, if you go to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, they may say Simple, Device, Code Zero, Olaf Meister, and Get Right. There's always that conversation there, even in real sports, right? If you pay attention to basketball, people debate Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, Bill Russell. Like, there's there's always that conversation in every sport, in every esport. There's that conversation, and I've not really seen people do it in Fortnite. Um, so recently, I've been quite obsessed with trying to trying to get that answer and trying to spark that debate. Um, I was recently, not recently, actually, a couple a couple months ago now. I was on Hotline FN with Barla TW and Tim McD. Amazing show. Go check that out. Available on every platform. If you listen to my podcast, you can find it on um, all of those platforms as well. And we had that discussion um, for, for, for a couple of minutes on the show. And essentially, I just want to get into it more here. I've had more time to gather my thoughts. Obviously, more things have happened since then. So a few things have kind of shifted on my list. Some things haven't changed. Some things will probably change soon as we go forward to season 11. Um, but before before we actually get through to my list and who I think is um, the top five, uh, I think it's important that we discuss a few things, right? Um, so I have some notes. So if you see me look down a bit, you, you know why. Um, first of all, it's important to discuss your criteria, right? For any type of list that you make where you're ranking different people, there has to be a criteria. There has to be things that you value more than others, which leads you to the decision you make, right? So I may value somebody's achievements more than I value their mechanical ability, right? So that's going to be more important to me when deciding where someone goes in my list. So just to list off to you my criteria in order of importance, I have achievements as my number one priority, mechanics, relevancy, um, if whether the person had an error or not, and the impact that they had on the meta, right? Now, to explain all of these things, achievements are simple. Rings, you know, chips. If you got the if you got the wins, then simple as. Mechanics, your mechanical ability, um, how efficient you have your builds, how quick you have your builds, how good your aim is, etc. Um, yeah, just ranking them on that. Relevancy, this one's a bit confusing. Um, relevancy for me is how consistent you've been throughout different time periods of the game. Right, so we've seen many players come through and be completely dominant in certain seasons and certain matters of the game and be completely irrelevant in others, right? So somebody's ability to stay kind of at the top level throughout every single season, throughout every single meta, throughout every single patch, that has a big impact on where I rank you. Um, then the impact that they have on the meta, whether how they played affected how the general population of the game played somebody who is not on, actually on my list i'll just spoil that and let you know now um but who is an honorable mention zexro right when zexro was dominating around the time of winter royale he 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 developed a kind of w key style that people start to copy and and it's still sort of relevant to, to, to today um that style is obviously adapted and been changed but that kind of w key style that he played back then is what these people started to, to, to adopt. So obviously, he's not actually on my top five. If I was doing a top 10, I'd probably have Zextra in there. And obviously, that would be something that would push him so far up that list is his impact on the meta. Um, so yeah, that's that's that with criteria. Um, when it comes to actually talking about uh, this top five list. Now, there's going to be people who, at this current time, are not top five players in the world. Having top five players right now versus top five players all time is a very, very, very different thing. So somebody else who's not in this list that I'll spoil for you right now is Benji Fishy. Benji Fishies has had probably the second best year, I'd say, in terms of compared to Fortnite. I'd say the only other person who's had a better year than Benji Fishy is probably Booga, right? Now, those two aren't on this list for me personally. You might have them on your list for all time, but it's because... Before, well, when referring to Benji, right? Before 2019, Benji doesn't have many results, right? 2018, we've had two years of compared to Fortnite now, right? 2018, obviously, people argue, hey, a lot of those invites were invite only. You know, there was an age restriction. And unfortunately, yes, it's true. Those things, you know, were out of people's control. But there are still some players who have results from 2018 in the biggest events that were available at the time. 
and obviously the eye take that into account. So if you have been the best player over 2018 and 2019, then you're going to be high on this list. If you've been only the, only been the best player over 2019, you most likely won't be on this list. So someone like Aqua, who's been dominant this year as well, you will not see Aqua on this list just because his dominance has only been f throughout 2019. 2018, the results weren't there. Now, obviously, let's say I'm to do this video again next year and Benji Fishy, for example, has replicated his 2019 performance into 2020. Then I start to establish him as saying, okay, he's one of the greatest players of all time. Even though in 2018, there wasn't many results there, 2019 and 2020 have showed that he is XYZ, whatever it is he is. So that is also one consideration. And another thing that I want to say, biggest kind of thing before I get into my list, is the fact that the way Fortnite's designed, the way they have the seasons, it has people in a very short-term mindset, right? People don't remember, and I've seen at least, people don't really remember the stuff that happened earlier. There's going to be people who I see on this list, and I'm going to say, like, they've had a good 2019. They're going to be like, that person's washed. Like, look, things have happened this year. A lot has happened this year. We're in... October, the 10th month. A lot has happened this year. Don't let recency bias affect your opinion of my list. Please, please, please be sure to make your own list. Let me know your criteria. Tweet it at me on Twitter. Leave in the comments below. I really want to see everybody's lists. Um, let's get make this a thing. Hashtag your top 10 list. And let's, let's or not top 10, sorry. Hashtag your top five all time list. Um, and let's see, let's see what people can, can, can come up with. So yeah. Just to, just to say again, just to reiterate a bit clearer, I'm not, this list has not been affected by recency bias. You're not going to see certain players who've only done well in recent, the past, you know, three months or so on this list just because they've done well the past three months. My opinion has spanned over 2018 and 2019. And let's just get right into it. Um, so at top five, this is, <laughs> so now this may be a bit contradictory in, um, to, to, to what I kind of was referring to earlier but the person you have at number 5 all time is Mongrel now Mongrel is someone who's been incredibly dominant um, over 2019 he's had one of the best years of any competitive Fortnite player 2018 though he was obviously affected a lot by the age restrictions and obviously the fact that because he was younger he wasn't able to go to certain events even this year he wasn't able to go to certain events like Katowice etc um, and I'm sure if he wasn't within that age restriction, he definitely would have been to those events. Um, but even just looking at Mongra's career, he's had 10 first place finishes in all events that he's been to or have competed in, sorry. Um, according to Fortnite, the Fortnite power rankings over at Gamepedia, Gamepedia sorry, he's had 10 first place finishes, five second place finishes, and three third place finishes, right? Now... I did actually the maths on this and I looked at all the events he's been in and then obviously I kind of did the maths and I figured out that of all events Mongrel has played in, he's had a 40% top three ratio. 40% top three ratio. Out of like 40 something events that he's played, 40% top three ratio. What does this mean? It means that in... It essentially just means that out of all the events he's played, he's come top three in 40% of them. That is ridiculous. Like, those kind of numbers are ridiculous. Like, when you consider in those stats, it makes you kind of realise, like, so in every event he's gone into, it's basically like a 40% chance that he could come top three. Crazy to me. He's been incredibly dominant. Obviously, he was affected by the fact that he couldn't play and whatnot. But... Because me, I think I think this one's more of a biased thing to me because of my personal experience. I think a lot of people probably disagree with this one um, based off of my criteria. But it's just, as somebody who used to compete in EU, I used to be in these private discords. I used to be around. I used to see and compete against him on a regular basis. He has just always been dominant throughout every single season, every single meta. He's always been one of the top players back in the old squad days. Who was one of the best players? Mongra. Who was one of the best team? Secret. Mongra was on Secret. Like, he's always been at the top. And for that reason, I've had to put him number five on my list. And it's literally nothing has changed, right? Some other players who are at the top of the scene now, someone like Benji. Benji's at the top now, but mid-2018, people didn't refer to Benji's on the top. Start of 2018, people didn't refer to Benji's on the top. Mongra has always been considered in EU as one of the top players. And therefore, he's number five all-time in my eyes. Now... 
number four all time, I've decided to go with Saf. Now, Saf is obviously where do we even start with Saf? Saf is has been one of the most dominant and most consistent players in all of Fortnite. Um, obviously, in recent in the recent weeks, you know, people may argue he's not at at the at the highest of the highest levels as that like compared to what he's been in in the past. But in terms of Saf's and the stats, let's get into the stats of it. Saf has had eight first place finishes, f- three second place finishes, and six third place finishes. Now, in doing the maths once again, um, for all the events he's played, that would equate to basically around 40%. 40% of events he's competed in, he's come top three, which is once again ridiculous. Um, for a long period of time, there was a, there was a period in time where Saf was considered, you know, one of the, the best solo player. I remember around the time of of Katowice, people considered him the best solo player. He they obviously considered him and Zay the best duo in the world. Um, Saf's always been up there. Like 20, 2018 was an amazing year for Saf. Um, in all of the kind of skirmishes he was invited to play, pardon me. In all of the skirmishes he was invited to play, and he performed incredibly well. Um, unfortunately, what kind of like. So obviously I have I'll spoil it for the next person I have Zay, but the reason why I would put Zay above Saf is basically just because Saf didn't qualify for World Cup solos. If Saf had qualified for the World Cup solos, then he probably would be above Zay because um I think when it comes to actual achievements, Saf does have just that bit more. Um, but Saf's always been dominant, always been at the top of the scene. It'll be interesting to see how he does during squads, um, if he's able to, to to maintain that standard. I'm sure he will because of the people he's playing with. Um, but yeah, I have Saf in fourth place all time. Third place, I just kind of spoiled it for you, um, but that shouldn't be a problem. I have Zayt, NRG Zayt. One of my favourite players. I've been following his journey for such a long time. Since he was in Llama Lords, I, I, I've been watching him and paying attention to him. And he's always been one of my favourite players. He's He's one of the most composed, intelligent, and just just confident players in the scene, right? Like, I've never, like, he, he has a lot of land experience, like, a lot of land experience, surprisingly. For in a scene that we haven't had many lands, he has quite a lot of land experience. Um, he has six first place finishes in, in all events that he's played. And the, and the key to him being up here is just his consistency, man. Like, he's been so consistent in all tournaments, all the events that he's been in. Um, I actually have it here. So, Saf, this is not Saf, sorry, Zayt was actually invited to, I think, every single summer skirmish week, except for week one. And in every single week, he came top 10. Every single week. 2018 was an amazing year. Like, at the end of 2018, you could probably make the case that he was, like, the second best player in NA. I think that would be if someone told me that I would have said yeah like I agree with that you could probably even make a case for the first um, but obviously there's other people who would be in line for that like and even 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 like this year he's been dominant he's played incredibly well um, making it obviously to through the Solo World Cup didn't perform that well in the finals of the Solo World Cup but making it then the first place is impressive obviously did quite decently in the, the duos of Sa- with um, Saf Came second at WSOE, came fourth at DreamHack Montreal last year. Um, like he, he, yeah, he's he's been insane. And obviously, in recent times, th- this is the thing, right? He's not someone he's for actually even fallen off, right? Because at the in the FNCS finals, he came fourth with his trio. So like Saf, um, Zay, sorry, for the both of them, I the, I was actually I'll be honest, I was very close to just having them both like joint third place. And then bumping somebody else up who was an honourable mention, because these guys are so incredible. But I think it was just that World Cup solo event that kind of put Zay above um, Saf for me. And 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 Zay did have the better twenty eighteen than Saf. This is like that like that summer skirmish that like is crazy. Every single week he came top ten, and then most of those weeks he was like winning or coming second place. So really really crazy to see. Um, Going to be very interesting again once once again. And he's just has like his mentality. Like, when you see interviews of him, like, I think even at the World Cup, before, like, they actually played, he was like, 
no one else. And I genuinely believed him. Of any like player, I've said this on previous podcasts, of any player that tells me they're not nervous before an event, I believe Zayt Demers, like he's so composed, so, so, so hard in the head in terms of just like how, how hard he works and his mentality. He kind of has that mumba mentality that Kobe Bryant has, you know, like that kind of drive to always improve and to just, to just dominate his opponents and, and beat his opponents. So Zayt is my number three all time. Uh, number two, number two, um, is Mitra. Now, obviously, being number two all time for all all regions, um, is very impressive. This obviously means I am calling him my number one EU player of all time. So, not only is he second all time, I think number one EU all time. Um, Mitra is amazing. Mitra has dominated the scene like. 2018 obviously in you can make the case that his 2019's not been as strong which it obviously just hasn't been but 2018 he absolutely tore up 2018 especially within the eu like for the majority of 2018 most people would have said mitro is like the best solo player period um i remember first seeing mitro uh mitro i mean mitro was on tricksters a team called tricksters with like phoenix and kinzo and somebody else forgive me i forget but yeah mitro mitro has always been up there when it comes to just being the best like i remember he, we were in like a we were in a private discord and it was when he had just joined atlantis and he was like pe- like people were like ah oh, this guy's just like a solo squatter he's not even that good da, 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 da. and like i remember he actually dropped like a picture of him a screenshot where he had dropped like 33 kills in like a solo squad or something. I was like, hey, this kid's insane. Then that day of scrims, he would, Atlantis were literally winning every single game. And it was like, okay, clearly this is the best pickup. If you look at Mitro's like, like history, look, Mitro has had 15 first place finishes in events that he's played. 15. 15. Of all of these players, when I went and did like the win percentage thing, Mitro actually had the highest. Mitro has won or Mitra has come top three in 41% of events he's played in. Absolutely, like, just easily the most dominant player of, in, in EU. He's been at the top of EU for so long. Um, obviously, in recent time, I think, you know, you know his performance has come into question. Like, but it, it doesn't even matter to me. Like, he's so... The fact that he's been able to do everything he's done on F keys, Mitra plays on F keys. What? How? 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 How are you so good on F keys? Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of Mitro. Incredibly funny as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully with his new squad um, for FNCS, he's able to 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 kind of do more, um, rack up more achievements and rack up more performances. Because I'd hate to see him go down. Because I just have such high respect for Mitro when it comes to like my my, my perception of him. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been interesting to see his journey's progression. He obviously has he has arguably the the greatest player of all time as well. You know, you're just talking about individual players that impulse play in the summer skirmish event where he impulses down and, and wins the game. It's like so like that that play is so amazing and like you literally you just from me saying it, you literally can see it in your head. You can imagine it because he's been that influential. He's been that big of a deal within the scene for so long, and very 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 confident in saying that he is the best eu player of like just the greatest eu player of all time um finally at number one if you can't guess who it is by now this one's a bit controversial and uh, obviously we can get into that more but at number one have bizzle ghost bizzle bizzle i think for a long time if anybody if i had like i think for the past before any time before when was what month was World Cup? World Cup was July, right? Any month before July, July and before that, I think if you had said Bizwell is the greatest player of all time, I don't think anybody would argue with you, anybody would debate with you. Um obviously in recent times that's kind of come into question because some of his twenty nineteen performances haven't been there, but twenty eighteen it's like it's ridiculous. It's literally ridiculous. In twenty eighteen Bizzle only had three events, right? Three events where he didn't come top 10. Let that sink in. I'll repeat that for you. In 2018, 
Bizzle only had three events where he didn't come top 10. And, and in only one of those events, one of those events, right, he didn't come top 20. So in 2018, Bizzle didn't have, Bizzle only had one event where he came more than like top 20. Ridiculous 2018 year. Obviously he came, he came out of 2018 being the highest um, earning player of all time. Um, actually, no, he didn't. Sorry, I think at the very, very early twenty nineteen, he became the highest earning. Um, yeah, um, versus Tfue, I think the battles between him and Tfue. But yeah, Bizzle's just been so dominant for all of twenty eighteen, early twenty nineteen as well. Though he kept that performance. Now this is this is where recency bias comes into big play, right? If you're thinking about Bizzle's performances in the past few couple of months, you may be like, no way, you can't say Bizzle number one all time. You can't say Bizzle. But if you actually look at his 2019 performances, they haven't been that bad. The first half of 2019 was amazing for Bizzle. Um, he did incredibly well at, uh, what events did I write down here? He did incredibly well at Secret Skirmish. I think he came like first in duos and fourth in solos, all the other way around. Um, Katowice, he did incredibly well. And in Katowice, he maintained his number one earning um, a title so yeah like the first half of 2019 for Bizzle was actually really good obviously in World Cup as well he did do he qualified for the World Cup solos unfortunately to qualify for duos but he qualified for the solos and obviously in amazing fashion he obviously did um, the whole qualifying without uh, uh, without shooting a gun thing or whatever it was that he did it was amazing Bizzle has been like the pinnacle of just top tier Fortnite for so long and like as much as maybe his recent 2019 performances hasn't been able to back that up to say that he's the greatest of all time I'm hoping that pardon me I'm hoping that with squads um come a change in that and that he's able to to, to elevate himself back up to the top I'm not actually too sure who he's playing with I don't know if it's announced yet but it'll be interesting to see um but yeah of, of course like the drop in results I don't think is enough to say He's not the greatest of all time, considering what he did in 2018, considering how dominant he was for the first half of 2019. I think it would be very, very, very interesting um, to, 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 to see how things progress for the rest of this year. Because this year's not done, right? We still have two months of this year. Um, so you never know, maybe he can crank it back up and, 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 and um, regain his undisputed title of best of all time. So... Yep, just to just to round out my list, I have Bizwell at number one, Mitra at number two, Zeta at number three, Saf at number four, and Mongrel at number five. That's my all-time ranking. That's not my current day ranking. If you want me to do a current day ranking video, I will happily do that for you guys. My current day top five is very, very different from my all-time. Like in my current day top five, I think only Mongra would only be Mongra would be the only player that remains in my current day top five. So if you want me to make a top five um, current day video, um, let me know down in the comment section below. Um, another thing I will say though as well is that I want to start making this a regular thing. Like I want to do this actually seasonally. So I think I might actually make a seasonal award video because Fortnite has so many seasons that you might as well, right? So I think I'm probably going to make a season 10 awards video where I kind of give out my own awards to different players who, who, who kind of deserve whatever it is I decide I want the award to be. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, let me know who your top five of all time are. Let me know your criteria. And I'll see you guys later.